Here are unbelievable animals that actually exist in real life. Number 10, Giant Weta. A giant cricket that eats carrots. No way. That sounds more like something from a children's cartoon than something that Mother Nature could actually produce. But that's exactly what the giant Weta is, a ridiculously big cricket that can eat vegetables. Found in New Zealand, they're often considered to be among the biggest insects in the world. In 2011, a park ranger named Mark Moffat found what might be the biggest living insect on this planet. While exploring a tiny island near New Zealand called Little Barrier Island, he came across a massive weta with a wingspan of 7 inches that weighed 71 grams. While they once populated the New Zealand mainland, they've since been found on small islands such as Little Barrier. Rats that came over from Europe brought by accident, of course, nearly wiped out the weta population entirely to the point where they're almost never found on the mainland anymore. Number 9. Hairy Frog When you first hear the name Hairy Frog, you might think of a hipster dive bar that your friend's garage band plays at. Or maybe it sounds like some sort of twisted fairy tale for kids. But no, we're actually talking about a real frog here. The hairy frog is also known as the horror frog or the wolverine frog. Like many of the world's most fascinating creatures, the hairy frog makes its home in Africa, primarily Central Africa to be a bit more specific. These things probably have one of the coolest and most bizarre defense mechanisms ever. When threatened, hairy frogs actually break their own bones and extend them through their own toe pads to fend off their enemies. Now, how badass is that? According to NewScientist.com, they pull off this amazing feat by contracting a muscle that connects the bones to connective tissue. When they flex that muscle, the bones break off and jut out through the toe pads. Then they can go ahead and unleash hell on their attacker. But obviously, they're not too powerful for us because apparently they make for a good snack. Hunters in places such as Cameroon are known to hunt them down with spears and knives probably to avoid those scary claws and sell them. Those who eat them like to roast them and have them served up as a snack or hors d'oeuvre. But still, these horror frogs, wolverine frogs, hairy frogs, or whatever nickname you want to give them, aren't to be messed with. Number 8. Panda Ant Pandas and ants don't have all that much in common, so the name is kind of interesting. But the truth is, they aren't even technically ants. They're actually a member of the wasp family, and by that I mean the winged creatures that have a painful sting. Not the rich family down the street who drive a Lexus and hang out at the country club. Anyway, panda ants are some feisty SOBs that can inflict a super painful sting. Growing up to 8 millimeters in length, they have such a powerful sting, they've been known to take out cows and other creatures that are infinitely bigger than they are. In fact, they've even garnered a pretty morbid nickname, the Cow Killer. Found mostly in the southwestern United States and Mexico, panda ants aren't known for being all that aggressive, so that's good for us at least. You'd still want to avoid them though, since they will sting when threatened, and if they can take out a cow, then we're probably no match for them. Their stings rank as a 3 out of 4 on the Schmidt Pain Index, which roughly translate to painful as f Number 7. Vampire Squid Their scientific name is Vampyrotuthus infernalis, which basically translates to vampire squid from hell. That may or may not be a true statement, I'll let you guys figure it out. The name vampire squid probably conjures up images of an evil squid terrorizing lost ships at sea and wreaking havoc on anything in its way. However, despite their fearsome appearance, the vampire squid is a fairly docile sea creature as they feed mostly on drifting particles called marine snow. Vampire squids pose little to no threat to other fish or marine life. That's sort of a letdown given their name, if I'm being totally honest here. However, that doesn't mean they're totally boring. Lurking deep in the tropical oceans around the world, vampire squids can withstand depth that very few living organisms could withstand. Generally speaking, they hang out at depths of two to 3,000 feet below the water. With large fins, they propel themselves through the water almost as though they're flying through the sea. Although they make few enemies at such great depths, 
they do have this pretty cool defense mechanism, which they form a web with their eight arms. They can also shoot out bioluminescent mucus that dazes their attacker long enough for them to simply disappear into the blackness of the deep sea. This allows vampire squids to easily evade anything trying to make a meal out of them. Since they live in depths where light can't penetrate, their body is lined with photophores, which allows them to basically glow in the dark, a process known as bioluminescence. But seriously, that bioluminescent mucus, ugh. Number six, red-lipped batfish. Seriously, something that's a cross between a bat and a fish? Well, not truly a cross, it's just its name. Their cousin is the slightly less well-known rosy-lipped batfish, and as both of their names suggest, their most distinctive feature is its big red lips. Living in the Galapagos Islands and off the coast of Peru, red-lipped batfish are surprisingly bad at swimming, which definitely seems like a pretty important skill for creatures living underwater. However, they're able to move around by essentially walking on their pectoral fins, which have adapted to allow them to walk around on the ocean floor. So about those bright red lips, they look like they're wearing makeup, so it makes sense their lips most likely serves to make them even more distinguishable during mating season. That's pretty much just the best guess marine biologists can come up with. It also has a special body part that extends outward called an elysium on the top of its head, which it uses as a way to lure prey near them. Even though these guys look really strange and maybe even dangerous, they're actually harmless to humans. Number five, aye aye. What the hell is this thing anyway? Is it a gremlin, Jabba the Hutt's annoying psychic? The aye aye is a small nocturnal mammal that lives only on the island of Madagascar. Although they may look like a rodent strung out on meth, it's actually a primate, believe it or not. It's closely related to chimps and apes as it's actually a lemur. Subsisting on an omnivorous diet, aye eyes typically roam the trees of rainforests, rarely coming down to the ground unless they absolutely have to. Although they look bizarre and probably frighten little kids, their distinctive anatomy helps them survive in the Madagascar canopy. Their opposable toes let them dangle from trees while their abnormally large ears and long middle finger help them hunt down food. They use a method called echolocation to help them catch prey, which means they tap their finger on a tree and then listen for wood boring insect larvae inside the trees. They then poke their long finger inside to scoop insects out. They catch their prey almost the same way my mom buys fruit at the grocery store. The tapping for sound part, that is. My mom's not uh, fingering any fruit at the grocery store. At least I hope not anyways. A according to National Geographic, they're the only primate to hunt using this method. They can even use their long, sharp finger to scoop out the inside of coconuts. Given their odd appearance, it may come as no surprise that the people who live in Madagascar consider these odd little mammals to be a bad omen. Although it's based on an old and crazy superstition, it's still pretty common for people to kill eye eyes whenever they see them. This practice has put their population at risk and laws have been adapted to try and protect the eye eye from extinction. Number four, the Royal Flycatcher. When you first see this bird, you probably think, whoa, that looks like a bird with a mohawk. But it's really just the Royal Flycatcher. The most common of these birds would be the Amazonian Royal Flycatcher. Not surprisingly, they're found in the Amazon forest, usually living in northern Bolivia, Peru, Venezuela, Ecuador, Brazil, and Colombia. And of course, their favorite meal is flies. What they'll do is post up in a tree and dart out when they see flying insects. Measuring just about six and a half inches long, these little guys use their size and quick speed to their advantage when they hunt. And they're pretty crafty too. They build really large nests on branches that hang out over water, making it hard for predators to hunt them down. This survival tactic seems to be working pretty well as their population is in good shape. Conservationists have virtually zero concern that their species faces any sort of threat. Oh yeah, about the royal in their name. They get that for its feathery display on the top of their heads. Formerly known as plumage, these feathers are on full display during mating season. Apparently, these colorful feathers really help to set the mood. Number three, height fine swallowtail caterpillar. While it may look like a peaceful butterfly from Avatar, the pipevine swallowtail caterpillar is found in North Africa and Central America. These caterpillars evolve into amazing looking butterflies. 
Generally speaking, the life cycle of a caterpillar evolving into a butterfly is a miracle of nature in and of itself, but these guys are especially amazing. Measuring anywhere between 2 to 4 inches, they sport an incredible blue scaling that makes for a perfect cover on National Geographic. Here's what's pretty crazy though. According to the gotscience.org, as caterpillars, they love to feast on toxic plants that pretty much everyone else in the animal kingdom would rather pass up. Not only can they withstand the toxicity of these plants, but they use it to their advantage if they're ever attacked. When a potential predator tries to take a bite out of the caterpillar, they shoot out this distasteful toxic liquid that scares them off. Their skin is super tough, easily tough enough to withstand the attack while they employ their secret weapon. Once they transform into the beautiful butterfly, that toxicity remains, and again, it's used as a defense mechanism. Potential predators, such as wasps who try to attack, stand no chance. So really, these caterpillars are extremely beautiful and deadly at the same time. That's the exact combination that makes for a hot date to a few of my friends, I know. Number two, Goliath beetle. Meet the world's heaviest bug. It's appropriately named the Goliath beetle. Making their home in the rainforest of Central Africa, the Goliath beetle can weigh up to three and a half ounces, which is almost a quarter of a pound. Combine that with their length of around four inches and you have one of the largest insects in the world. Imagine seeing some of these things crawling around your kitchen. While they may look kind of freaky, they actually play an important role in the ecosystem. Often referred to as nature's janitors, they're known to feast on dead plants and animal poo. So think about it this way. The next time you're trekking through an African rainforest and don't see or smell a bunch of animal poop, you can thank a goliath beetle. In general, beetles are one of the Earth's most fascinating creatures. We all know they'll survive a nuclear war, if it ever comes to that, as they've been around for roughly 300 million years, which makes them the world's oldest insect. However, as cool as these insects are, they'll likely always be overshadowed by Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and the rest of the Beatles. Number 1. The Giant Scale Worm Broadly speaking, scale worms can describe any member of a family of scaled worms. They all have their own distinct look, and some of them are actually not too bad looking. But then there's the Eulogisca scale worm, which aren't really good looking at all. This worm looks like something straight out of nightmares. It almost looks as though it's part of space alien and in part radioactive sea creature. Good thing this giant scale worm inhabits Antarctica far away from any of us. When this guy wants something to munch on, the entire front of their throat rolls out of its mouth. While scientists don't know a whole lot about these guys and what they eat in general, some people have speculated that they're probably active hunters. The majority of scaled worms are known to be skilled hunters who often dwell near or under rocks. By the looks of this thing, it doesn't look like anything really would want to get in its way. Here's what's next. The pelican eel is a deep sea fish that basically no one gets to see except when they're on YouTube or they're out at the sea, where it gets occasionally caught in fishing nets. It also goes by the name Pelican Gulper, and probably the coolest one of them all, the Umbrella Mouth Gulper. The gulper eel typically grows...